Stock Market Today, October 5th, 2022. NASDAQ down 0.25%. S&P 500 down 0.20%. U.S. Treasury up 11.6 basis points. Gold down 0.31%. Bitcoin down 0.87%. Oil up 1.57%. This is an email I, I get from the um, We Study Mar Markets by the Investors Podcast Network. And sometimes, sometimes I, I don't necessarily feel in alignment with their sort of general sentiment or narrative on things you know for example here seems like they're kind of like pumping this up stocks traded sharply lower this morning following the best two-day trading period since 2020 and uh also talking about um people having optimism on the fed pivoting from its rate hikes and talks a little bit about uh, a little bit of this oil rally after OPEC is confirming to cut production. You know, the, yesterday was a big update, and the uh, risk came down in the market a little bit yesterday. Today, our risk indicator is closing out at 259.70, still in this high level of risk, kind of right smack dab in the middle. And here's a graph of it going back to August 29th. We see that we started in the low end of risk and we've been steadily climbing higher in risk. Peaked up here, getting close to this 300, but pulled back. Now we're in this mid, mid range. When they talk about um, the Fed pivoting, this is what they're talking about, these rates. These rate hikes. See how these rates, U.S. Treasury yield on the 10 year had been going up, pulled back a little bit, went up a little bit, pulled back, went up. And uh, this isn't your grandfather's stock market anymore. So instead of some company opening up new locations, some company launching a new product, this is really what the stock market is trading on. It's whatever. The Federal Reserve is doing with these rates and if they're going to do something that is similar to quantitative easing even though they might call another name but you know if it looks like a if it looks like a duck quacks like a duck smells like a duck walks like a duck defecates like a duck eats like a duck it's probably a duck so it's the same thing with this sort of stimulative things so if the if the Regardless of a lot of these other factors, if the Fed is going to stimulate, then uh, at the moment, price is going up. If the Fed's not stimulating, then uh, price is going down. And it really seems to be that sort of black and white. What happened today? S&P 500, right? This is, here's our candle for the day. So even though yesterday was a big, had a big up day, you know, our volume is not really, look at that, we're under the daily average. So if this was going to be a big reversal of trend, right, we look at this. This is for one year. You can see going up around this time was the peak, and it's just been going down, right? If we're going to reverse this trend, I guess we need to see some more volume coming in, buying volume. Well, right now we're we're over this little little range here. It's catching some support here, and our next level of resistance is right in there. We got that 25-day moving average going down on it. Our Pro 2 chart showing us that the money's still been flowing out, and the stochastic is still pretty wide, although it's kind of narrowing a little little bit. Technology sector. S similar picture up here on that big trend. We've been in this downward um, downward trend for a while on that weekly stochastic. 
it's under that 33% red line here and maybe maybe is it going to start pushing up we'll see cuz we got the same problem here with the the volume in the in the technology sector it's not meeting its uh, its daily average and um, actually decreased in volume today we'll see what it looks like throughout the end of the week but if it's really going to be a increasing a, a changing of trend we need we need to see something different otherwise possibly just looking at like a bear market rally short covering rally whatever you want to call it healthcare got a similar picture going on here and with a little bit of a difference of the um that weekly stochastics starting to go sideways a little bit or it looks like maybe it's going to as it uh, stays a little bit over that 32 percent line might be going sideways like it did here but money is flowing out big uptick in that volume yesterday but uh falling short today and similar thing now we're caught kind of in this range right in here although we we did make it over the 25 day moving average and uh opened above it closed above the 25 day moving average consumer discretionary right it's different different uh ticker symbol same same sort of look on that pro 2 chart downward trend money flowing out volume fell off today Look at that. We had when this rally first started, it must have been since Wednesday, Tuesday, Monday, right? Uptick in volume over the average. Tuesday, increasing volume over the previous day. Wednesday, falling short and even closed down a little bit lower instead of going up. Now we're, we're also caught in this range right here. Financials, again, we got the same big picture trend over here money flowing out downward stochastic also volume falling off a little bit uh let's see our our daily candle all right it's it didn't didn't break that got close to the um 25 day moving average and pulled back get really stuck in this range although it's kind of went one up one up on the on the range table <laughs> Oh, real estate, downward trend, we got money flowing out, strong downward trend on the weekly. Uh, in fact, with real estate, um, money started flowing out. We had, had more selling than buying today, and we see that it was a down candle. IWM, again, different different letters for the ticker, and a very similar picture on that Pro 2, money flowing out strong downward trend on the weekly stochastic volume same thing we had yesterday we had an increase in volume from monday but today volume uh, significantly fallen off and we see a, we see that kind of reflected here in today's candle it opened up in the lower 50 percent of the yesterday's uh, uh bull candle and um, closed in the i guess the upper 50 percent but traded all the way down here buying pushed it up here it's uh, I guess maybe hitting some resistance on this 25 day moving average and just getting stuck in this price consolidation that we see that has happened in the past cues same thing on the pro 2 strong downward trend on the weekly money flowing out volume is is not looking good if this is going to be some sort of bear, bullish day to celebrate or bullish week to celebrate this this is we need to see some volume picking up and um although we we got a, a wider range body a whole wider range of trading too but um wider range eh, kind of a little bit wider range of that but nonetheless it's basically went sideways and what i mean by that is look where it closed here yesterday look where it closed here today it's basically just went sideways and it could be building a base right or um or could be heading to the downside the dollar dollar took a little boop, bump up today but uh we see for one two three four five six almost uh so we got like six trading days all uh, the ended ending of last week and beginning of this week the dollar has just been selling off even though there's been a little 
bump in there. And um, on the Pro 2, we finally see a different picture, lots of green. So money has been flowing into that, and which is causing this weekly stochastic to be stuck above this 80% red line across here. See, 80, 80% line. So just getting stuck over there, hit this 25-day moving average and bounced up a little bit. As long as it um, you know stays in these elevated ranges, maybe we're going to see uh, other assets pulling back. Oil. Oil at $88 at the moment. So we definitely broke this uh, $82 resistance. Uh, I was talking about the 85 right now. We're, we're over that, but that candle is looking pretty weak. We see the good bullish candle here, really wide range expanding candle here, kind of momentum slowing here. And looking back the last three months, you can see it could really just get stuck in this range. I wouldn't be surprised if it gets stuck somewhere in this. We see up here to the to the 95 and maybe staying somewhere from 86 to 95 or maybe maybe the some um, high 80s and falling back down into here. But definitely has has a bit of this this range from the high 90s potentially down a real wide range into the mid 70s g o l d g o g o l d sold off a little bit hit that uh, 50 day moving average and came down tested it yesterday today opened up near it uh, even tested it but sold off and now we're continuing to kind of sell off getting stuck right in this trading range right here around that 1720 area and bitcoin a lot of people are going to be happy with this that we are at the moment holding above the 20,000 mark we're above the 20 day moving average but uh, hitting this hitting some some resistance at this 50 day moving average we can see it tested it here couldn't stay above it testing it here right now it's it's not really it seems to be on the bottom side of that. So if it can't break that, maybe what will happen is that you got a steep declining 50-day and maybe a slow, slow inclining 20-day. Um, and when those two start meeting, we need we need some movement to the upside to break through this. Otherwise, it's probably going to bounce down. We will see what happens with that. Speaking of what happens so looking at the S&P 500 on the line chart this is don't worry about these I don't I have no idea why they're there I just needed these lines here and they came by default so we see this is kind of, this is sort of like the top of our trend sometimes it gets above it but it kind of comes back in and this is about the bottom of our trend so right now here we are today we have moved up if we're going to reverse this trend, it's got to get it's got to get past this. It's got to break through this. It's got to keep going, and then the next level that's got to get across would be right in there. You can see that it here, and it's kind of like here and here. It it has a sticking point, but it definitely uh it's got to get through here. It's got some resistance in there, and then ultimately it's got to really break this this channel right here and keep going up. So if it can't, let's say, let's say if it's, um, once it gets close to like 10 more dollars up around, um, the 3388, 3390, some, somewhere in there, if, if it's having a difficult time breaking that and getting past it, then it's probably gonna be heading for the downside. If it slices through that like butter, then we want to look at what would be the next thing. Okay. This would be the high nineties. If it starts breaking over this high 90s and and goes through this $400 area like butter too, then then maybe we're going to see a good reversal to the upside. But if it doesn't, if it's if it's weak, if it's doing that, if it starts really struggling, then we'll probably see what happened here. Right, drop down right here, rallies up, test this, can't hold it, drop down, rallies up. Eventually, here it breaks this breaks this this trend here, but can't hold it and drops down. So. What can you do in the meantime? You can you can paper trade if you don't know what to do. If you if you literally 
don't know what to do. If you're looking to other people to figure out what to do, paper trade, try something, learn from experience. Don't rely on the suspect opinion of other people when you can test out your own opinions. You can take in information from other people and use it to, to try to come up with some decision and test the accuracy of your decision and paper trading account. See what happens. And what you can do to help yourself with that is you go to iofsuccess.com, download all four of these, download one of them, how many ever you want. Use that, use whatever's here to your advantage. I'll put stuff right into your inbox daily. Use all that stuff. It's free. So go ahead and do that. And you guys have a fantastic day. We look forward to seeing what happens in the stock market tomorrow. Bye-bye.